Hello, and welcome back to the UFRED 10 podcast series. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, my name is Sarah Chesson, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at the University of Fredericton. So today we're happy to be speaking with the San Ramon School of Business MBA alumna Whitney Keys. So Whitney is based in Seattle, Washington, and has worked as a consultant for her own firm for the past 10 years, developing strategic approaches to help social enterprises and other organizations. Her experience spans across a variety of industries, including working with the U.S. government, where she managed programs that focused on supporting small businesses and women leaders, as well as with the corporate communications team at Microsoft, where she helped create the company's first corporate social responsibility report. Whitney is the author of Propel, Five Ways to Amp Up Your Marketing and Accelerate Business, and regularly writes for business publications and blogs, including Seattle Post Intelligencer's Biz Byte blog. So welcome, Whitney. Thank you so much. So we'll get started here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, well, as you mentioned, I'm based in the U.S. in Washington State. And um, I've lived in the state my entire life. I grew up about an hour south of Seattle in a town called Tacoma. And I grew up in a family where we had several businesses. My parents were both artists and art professors. So we had a wholesale pottery business and a retail art gallery. So I really got entrepreneurism in my blood at a young age. I was expected to help my family out with marketing and sales and product development and all, all that good stuff. Um, and kind of went on in my career to eventually study journalism and communications. I really did always enjoy the art and science of trying to figure out how to communicate about a product or service, how to connect with customers. So spent a lot of my education early on focused on that. Um, and I went on after working for my family business for a number of years after college. I ended up working in economic development for the city of Tacoma where I did spend a lot of time helping smaller businesses stay in business. At that time, it was in the U.S. when big companies like uh, Walmart and Starbucks were kind of moving into Main Street America, and there was a big concern that they were impacting the economies of those small towns. So that was a lot of my focus at that time, and helping those businesses communicate what they do and connect with customers. And then after that, I ended up working at Microsoft, as you mentioned, as well, and, and had a really great career there, um, but wanted to get back to my entrepreneurial roots, and that's why I ended up leaving and having my consulting practice for quite a while. That's so interesting. It sounds like you've had a lot of varied experiences. So what was it that drove you to continue your education, especially with a Canadian university? Well, a few different things. I, I've... I love education, I love learning, I'm a very curious person, and getting my master's was always something that I imagined doing, it was just a matter of timing it. When I was at Microsoft, I was in my late 20s, early 30s, and I thought about it a lot there, but it was hard to find the time, and my career was growing, so I felt at that time, well, maybe it's not needed. And so it wasn't until I left and was um, focused on my own consulting practice that I began to research different programs. And it was challenging for me to choose because I am very passionate about communication and journalism and working with the media. So I looked into those types of advanced programs. I'm also very passionate about business, so considered quite a few MBA programs. But in my work with the State Department, working internationally through the U.S. government, I began to work quite a bit with social entrepreneurs and explore this concept of bridging using a business to do good in a community and in, in society and around the world. And how how can those two fit together? You know, how can you do sort of what a nonprofit does but then apply a business framework? So I began to think about and trying to find some type of program that had a social enterprise focus. And it was challenging at the time. I think I started looking maybe seven years ago. And I just didn't see much out there. And it wasn't until a good friend of mine who's Canadian, um, I was spending time with him, was telling me how great of an experience he was having going to school at UFRED and um, how much you know he valued the professors and his colleagues, his cohort was just full of incredible people doing amazing things, and he was learning so much. And I, I thought, maybe that would be a good fit for me. Um, and he had told me, I think at that time, that 
the university was beginning to put together a, a new program focused on social enterprise. And so that really appealed to me, and that's kind of what led me to make the decision to continue my education. Oh, that's so interesting. I, I, we, it's not uncommon for us to hear from people who have uh, found out about us through their peers and that kind of thing, so that's great. If you had to, how have you found that your education at UCRED has really enhanced your career, would you say? I'm using what I learned every single day. I mean, it absolutely has enhanced my career. I think there are practical, practical aspects of pursuing your MBA. You know, you can potentially leverage for a higher salary or um, it gives you a certain amount of credibility in a different way that you didn't have before. I mean, there, there are those types of things. Um, personal satisfaction-wise, I mean, I, I learned so much. I had been running my own consulting practice, so was in charge of business development and sales and IT and operations. Um, my consulting practice is small, so I'm, I'm wearing a lot of hats and doing a lot of those things as a solopreneur. Um, but what I learned in just new access to new theories and frameworks and different concepts, what I learned from my colleagues, the professors exposing me to a variety of different ideas and case studies, it was just tremendous experience. So I, I literally do use it every day. I uh, continue to keep in touch with many of my colleagues that are all doing incredible things, um, very different from me, but continue to learn from them and have them to go to. And, and I've reached out to my professors as well in various occasions. So it's definitely been fantastic icing on my career cake, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. If you had to pick sort of one standout moment from your UFRED education, what would you say that it would be? I think the... That's a, that's a tough question. I think the standout moment was probably in one of my social enterprise courses, and I don't remember exactly what which it was, but there were a couple professors at the time, um, David LePage, Andy Horsnell, and David Upton, and um, there was a there was one class where we were able to focus on a social enterprise project, and I have a couple ideas that I'm working with on concepts that I want to pursue and haven't launched them yet, but having the opportunity to present that business pitch basically and gain their insight and expertise because they are you know, recognized throughout Canada and the U.S. as experts when it comes to social enterprise leadership and gain insights from my colleagues. I mean, that particular class I will never forget because we worked on a business plan and, and it was my idea, and I, again, gained tremendous feedback and insight from everyone. So that's, that's a moment that I'll never forget, and I'm, I'm continuing to retool that business plan, but that exposure to the class's energy was fantastic. That's so great to hear. So what do you see, Whitney, as being kind of the primary benefit of your UFRED education then? I think the primary benefit was, again, just building my knowledge. I, I love reading books. I love taking classes. But there's just a different way of absorbing information when you are, you know, both, both feet in, day in and day out, in your classes with your colleagues as a part of your larger cohort associated with such a fantastic university, and then getting access to these amazing professors that have such diverse backgrounds and impressive CVs. I mean, that has just been fantastic for me, that, that benefit of just expanding my knowledge. And it's funny, I was thinking that there were classes at first when I looked at the curriculum of, oh, goodness, you know, I'm going to have to study information systems or operations. And as someone who's spent most of my career in business strategy and marketing, media relations, I anticipated those being more challenging or dry, kind of stereotypically for me. Mm -hmm. And I love those courses. Um, James <laughs> Bowen <laughs> was the information systems professor and just made it so exciting and relevant and really did a good job of making it relevant to my business. Um, Sheila, I think her last name is Fournier. Um, she was the professor of operations, same thing. Um, even economics, I've always been interested in economics, but not taken a course on it and not really 
you know, rolled up my sleeves and really dug in. And um, Jeff Reed was a professor there, it was amazing. I mean, the, the professors were really the primary benefit of people that I would never normally have access to. Um, even Carol Ann Faint, who taught corporate governance and leadership and values and ethics, those are classes that I was really excited to take. And um, yeah, those professors really helped make the information relevant. They took the time to apply the topics to where I was in my career and, and what I was dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I didn't feel like I was just in a big lecture hall and, and no one really cared about me. I felt like all of the professors worked very hard and made themselves accessible to, to give me as much benefit as possible. That's so great to hear. So you've kind of touched a little bit on some of the projects that you're working on and that kind of thing, but I'm wondering where do you see yourself going both professionally and academically now that you're, you're all finished with you, Fred? <laughs> I am. Well, um, professionally, I continue to explore options. As I mentioned a little earlier, there are some social enterprise models that I'm looking at of how to maybe create new business ventures that are doing social good. Um, I, there are a lot of social causes that I care about, but I do enjoy working with underserved populations um, here in the U.S. and abroad. You know, that's been at times working with young women leaders, working with um, youth who are interested in social entrepreneurship, um, you know, religious groups, minority groups, and so forth. So I have some ideas there. Um, I, I think academically, I'm, now I'm very inspired. I think about sometimes maybe I would want to get my PhD. I have always done teaching on the side. I've always been an adjunct at a few universities. And that's something I consider. Um, again, I love learning. And maybe since my master's is in business, my PhD, I'll go back to journalism or something related to communication. I haven't decided yet. But I guess my experience with our university is just that I'm inspired and excited. My passion for learning w was fulfilled, but it, but it's still there. So I think, yeah, professionally working on some new business ventures and then academically just keeping my eyes and ears open if I want to pursue something at the next level, PhD related. Well, that's so interesting. That's, that's great to hear that you've got so many aspirations now. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We uh, obviously are, are quite excited here that it's our 10-year anniversary, and we're really looking forward to it. So it's something that we're kind of asking everyone as we go through is, what makes you proud to have completed your education with you, Fred? Oh, I, I feel very proud. I, I feel proud personally of the accomplishment, because it was a lot of time and a lot of work. I think in total it was three years of my life, because I chipped away at the coursework and was doing a lot of international travel and consulting, so I, I couldn't be in a full-time um, academic program. So I feel very proud that I did it, that I completed it, that I stayed focused. And there were times where I was able to fit in more than one course and that I have that MBA now that I, that I earned. And I feel very proud that I was the first cohort for the um, social enterprise leadership program and that I was able to not only benefit from the information but be a part of the professors and the university developing that curriculum and sort of serving as a, as a guinea pig. Um, and I, I feel very proud too because again, I, my friend who attended you, Fred, and um, other colleagues of mine, I mean, I know how respected the university is and so I feel proud to be a part of it and part of its success, too. Well, that's great, Whitney. Before we let you go here, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about your UFRED experience? You know, one thing I get asked about quite a bit in the U.S. online education is, is evolving, but it, sometimes it's still questioned. And what I always tell people is what was so beneficial for me and what I think pretty unique or was at the time that I started were the phone classes. So this isn't just completing some easy exams online, you know, or reading some information online. The fact that the, that the university requires that students participate in phone classes was terrific, and the professors were very engaging, making sure that you were not, you know, tuning out playing video games, <laughs> but really engaged in the lectures and participating and calling on you. I mean, it felt as though I was in an actual classroom. I think that that was very powerful. 
that said, there were times where I was halfway around the world and couldn't make one of those classes, so they were all recorded. Um, but again, the professors then would want to make sure that you documented your participation in class and reached out to them, having classes or questions just as you would in the class. So I felt that that was a very powerful part of the experience. And again, of course, just the diversity in the classmates. Here where I live in Seattle, we have several excellent um, MBA programs. The University of Washington is one of the top in our country, and I, I certainly could have gone there. But for me, I, for the most part, it would have been a lot of people from Microsoft, and I've already worked at Microsoft, and we kind of have our standard um, tech companies here. And while that might be great, I was really looking for diversity and inclusion of a variety of different industries and sectors and, and knowledge and information. And at the University of Fredericton, I mean, for me, I had people that were in the oil industry and working in the prime minister's office and people that were um, social entrepreneurs just running their own businesses, uh, people that were interested in finance. It was just such a diverse group of colleagues, all different genders. Um, I think because um, Canada is such an inclusive country too, just many different um, different people from all around the world and I really valued that too. So I think those are a couple things that really stood out for me as an exceptional experience with the university. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing with us, Whitney, and we really appreciate you uh, being here today with us. You are welcome. My pleasure.